Hello, my name is Shannon, and I am here with Muscle D Fitness to introduce one of our exciting new machines. So this here is the compact, single stack, multi-gym, and I'm going to teach you 17 different exercises today. Obviously, you can innovate and do whatever else you want, but what makes this machine amazing is that it has the same quality, commercial quality, you would find in a gym, but you can have that in the comfort of your home. The first exercise we're going to do today is the chest press. So obviously the first thing you're going to do is pick your weight. So for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go nice and light to get the form correct. Then I'm going to sit on the machine. And we have two different grips available. So to make it easier, the lower bench position is going to be the vertical. And then you're going to raise the, the bench to get the horizontal position. So the proper form on this, depending on your body type, how you want to sit. You can either put your feet position on the ground or you can bring your legs on top. What's really important is that you squeeze your stomach in, grab the vertical, and then take a nice deep breath in, and then push straight out. Good. And if your back's not against the mat, I would recommend that you actually sit, put your feet to the side, and sit all the way back so you have proper form. You get the full maximum extension. Okay, then part two, if I want to switch my grip to have a little bit of a different impact on my chest press, I'm actually going to raise the seat. And the handle is going to be to your right. So you're going to pull it, and it's going to rise up ever so effortlessly. And then you're going to move your hands to the horizontal grip. And again, so I'm taking a nice deep breath. I'm squeezing my back, my lats, and I'm pulling my stomach in, pressing my back against the bench, taking a nice deep breath. Breathe out. Nice range of motion. Make sure you have a weight you can handle. And when you feel ready, you can up the weight. The other thing to know about this exercise is there's different types of range of motion. But the beginner one is here. If I want to bring the bar back, I'm just going to stand up. And you go to this adjustment. So this is going to be if you're facing away from the machine on the left side. If you're facing towards it on the right, it's this beautiful red handle. So I'm going to pull it back. If I want to go have a lot more range of motion, I'm going to go up towards the one. That's pretty far back, probably not realistic. And if I want less range of motion, I'm going to go all the way towards the six, moving it towards you. All right, moving along to the second exercise. We can actually do an incline chest press with this machine. How do we do that? So I'm going to go to the adjustment. This was the one for this part. Now we're going to actually adjust this. So there's another red handle, if you're facing away to the left of the machine, if you're facing towards it to the right. I'm going to pull that back, and I can actually move this forward. If I want the full extreme, obviously, I'm going to go all the way forward. But there are one, two, three, four, five. There's five notches. So again, depending on how intense I want the incline to be, I'm going to go all the way towards the fifth notch, make sure that it locks in. Voila. All right. Next step, I'm going to get back in the machine. Now keep in mind, remember, we do have two different heights for this seat, depending on which angle we're going to use. So I'm going to use the horizontal one first because the seat's all the way up. So I'm going to lean forward to get that nice angle, and you're going to feel the chest pulling back on this. So I'm going to lean forward and I'm going to go straight up. Nice, vertical, straight up, inclined chest press. Now if I want to switch the angle just a little bit, the seat is very fluid, it's wonderful ergonomically, and then I'm going to go straight up, straight up. And again, I can go all the way back, all the way forward, depending on my range of motion. Good. Now let's say I want to go a different angle with the vertical hand grip. I'm just going to reach down here, make the bench go back down, and voila, I have another angle for my incline chest press. Let's say I want to go here, that's the proper angle. I prefer the horizontal one, but it's up to you. Exercise number three is ab crunches. So again, we're going to do a few little mini adjustments to get them to happen. The first one is, this obviously seems like it's in the way, so we're just going to reach up here, move it all the way back to the number one setting, so it's nice and out of the way. And then number two, we want to put the back rest all the way back as well. Just going to reach back here and push the back rest all the way back. Good. And then make sure that this V is available because this is what we're going to get next. Okay? So if somebody happened to take it off the machine, you're going to put it right back on. All right, next up, I'm going to sit down, make sure that my back is against this, and I'm going to reach back and grab handle one, 
and then hand it to. And there's a few different measurements, but what you really want is this V to come up to your neck. So it seems to me like this one might be a little high. So I'm actually going to adjust the bench so that I go up more to get the perfect angle. And then once I grab them, it's very simple. You grab here and then you're going to bring them together. So it's almost like a nice towel around your neck. And then I'm going to squeeze in and I'm going to go forward for a full ab crunch. And down. Good. And again, let's say my legs are a little shorter, which they are. Then I'm going to try again just to see if I can get the angle right. I'm going to put the bench back down so my feet are firmly planted on the ground. I'm going to try one more time, even though it's not fully touching my neck, to see if I can get a different type of range of motion. And I go here. And that's a little more difficult, but I definitely feel it in my core. And if you feel like mixing it up a little bit, you can go side to side. So I'm going to go to my left up and to my right and up and back to the center. Make sure you breathe out on the way down and breathe in on the way up. All right, we're on to exercise number four. This one's pretty exciting because the machine's now going to transform into a seated row. How do we get there? All right, first of all, obviously you're going to adjust this, but now facing the other direction. So what's really neat about this is it's like an air piston. You don't have to pull it up. It'll actually naturally rise. You put the weight down to get it all the way down. But if you want it to come up, I put my feet on the ground, just pull it, and it's going to rise with me. OK, the next step is I want to make sure that these bars, right now they're all the way forward, but they might be back here. So we put the bar all the way up to the setting number one up here. All right, next I have to decide, am I going to do the seated row with the horizontal grip, or am I going to do it with the vertical grip? I'd like to start with the horizontal grip. So I'm going to grab here, put my feet down, nice strong posture, squeezing my core, and I'm going to pull back. Breathe in on the way out, breathe out on the way back. Breathe in, breathe out. Good. And so you can see, if I'm having the grip up here more and the bench is up, I'm able to work the top part of my back. Again, pull. One, and. Okay, now using that same grip, I want to get a little bit more of the top, so I'm going to go back down. And now I change the angle of my seated row. Up to the top, elbows out. And now for the variation. So the variation is we're going to go with the vertical grip. Now the vertical grip is going to, we can do it with the elbows instead of the elbows out. We're going to bring the elbows down so it gets a little bit lower on the back. I'm going to start with the bench down because it's already down. All right, here we go. So I grab up there, squeeze my stomach, and pull elbows down. Breathe in, breathe out. Making sure my feet are planted in the ground, pulling back. Good, and once again, to give a variation of the angle, I'm going to squeeze up on the handle again. It's going to slowly rise. It's going to come to me. I don't have to pull it up. And then once again, I'm going to grab and pull. Excellent back workout. Next up, we have exercise number five, the lat pull down. An incredible back exercise if you can't do a pull-up, this is a wonderful option. So what you need to know, there's a few variations of grips depending on how advanced you are in the lap pull-down. You could do narrow, you could do underhand, you could do wide. So I'm going to show you three grips today. First of all, pick your weight. Then you're going to go ahead and hop on. Now, again, you can adjust the bench depending on your height, what you feel comfortable with. But ideally for these, once you grab the bar, you want to lock your knees underneath this right here to give you a nice... Uh, to help secure you in the seat. So I'm going to start with the narrow grip, and the focus is going to be on elbows in, bringing the bar down to my chest, this part, and really pulling down here so I can feel my back engage. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to lock my knees under, and then I'm going to pull down, elbows in, squeeze, and up. Pull down, elbows in, and squeeze, and up. 
I also have the variation of I can lean back and I can pull down and up, pull down. Good. So the second variation is going to be the underhand grip. Same thing, I'm going to lock my thumbs on depending on what your coach says or what you want to do. I like to put the thumbs to hold the grip nice and strong. So I'm going to hold it. Same thing, I'm going to push my knees underneath the different pads. I'm going to pull down and I'm going to make sure that I'm going in front and arching my back, lifting my chest up, squeezing in, really firmly pushing my feet on the ground. Breathe in, breathe out, pull down. Breathe in, pull down. You'll notice also when I'm doing this exercise, that depending on the form you're going to use, I can keep here without expanding my back, or I can relax and reach up, and then pull down my lats, and then pull it down. So depending on the motion, you can really focus on the isolation of your back. All right, this is the third form. I'm going to go nice wide grip, so there's a curve in the bar. I'm going to grab just to the outside of the curve. Okay, and this one, is going to be elbows out, and it's also going to come down to my chest. Again, lock those knees underneath, take a nice deep breath, elbows out to the top of the chest, right underneath it. Breathe in, breathe out. Good, and again, if you're looking for a variation, you might want to lean back just a little bit. Change the angle for your back. And there you have a nice complex lat pull down workout. Exercise number six is the tricep press down. So if you're like me, you've ever been in the gym and you try to do the press down and you ring the bell or basically you get to the top before your arms are extended, that can be super frustrating. So what we've done is we've actually made a chain to extend the range of motion so that you can get your full press down. Here's how you lock it in. First of all, you just clip it in here if it makes the, the line longer. And then you simply come up here, lock it in, and it's that simple. Okay. So how do we do a press down? Obviously, depending on your form or your technique, you can do it as you wish, but I'm going to do a simple shoulder width grip. I'm going to lock my elbows in. I'm going to slightly bend my knees, and I'm going to go straight down. And just for the sake of the camera so you can see the form, I'm going to go here, elbows in, shoulders down, straight down. Squeeze in, straight down. I can do it with my feet together, straight down. And there you go. All right, so after you finish your tricep extension, if you want to do the lat press down, because of the extension, it actually makes it very easy. Same thing, I'm going to bring my shoulders down. And then instead of going from the elbows, I'm going to go from the shoulder, hinging at the shoulder. I'm going to lean forward and press straight down. Breathe in. Straight down. And again, for the variation for the camera, again, lean forward, coming from the shoulder, pull down the back. Breathe in. Breathe out. I like to do it with my feet together, breathe in. Exercise number seven. We're going to mo move into the crossover pulleys right here. They're actually really fun because they're adjustable. So just for future reference, we're going to do a few exercises with them. There's a handle on either side. It's red, once again. And I pull it out, and there's several settings. So I can go all the way down, or I can go all the way up. But for the next one, we're going to do chest, pec, fly, and I'm going to go to number two. All right, so again, you can adjust as you wish, but I'm going to start out with number two on both sides. Just pull it out. I'm already at number two. And then go ahead and hop onto the bench. Again, make sure you adjust your seat up or down, depending on your height. And go ahead and grab the handles. For the first crossover pulley exercise, which is going to be the pec fly. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my form. I'm going to take a nice deep breath, expand my chest, and then once you do your first range of motion, you don't have to go back all the way. But what you want to do is you want to squeeze your front deltoids and you want to squeeze your chest. So take a nice deep breath, 
and then squeeze. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. What's really amazing about this machine is that the back actually moves with you. So watch carefully behind me as I breathe in. Breathe out. And the back supports moving with the machine. Breathe in. Breathe out. Squeeze the chest. Okay. Let's say I want to change up my range of motion a little bit. All I'm going to do is breathe in. I'm going to lean forward a little bit and then breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Exercise number eight is going to be the chest press with the crossover pulleys. So for this one, I recommend readjusting to from number two to number one. So all you're going to do is pull back the red handle and lift up the bar. Lock it in, make sure it's secure at number one. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Pull out the bar, lift up, lock it in at number one. Hop back on the machine and chest press. All right, the number one difference, if you're brand new to this workout, the difference between the fly and the press is the arm position, right? So my elbows are out in the fly, and I'm squeezing this muscle and this muscle, and I'm squeezing my stomach. In terms of the chest press, I'm actually gonna grab, and instead of, like, uh, instead of doing like a bear hug, you're actually gonna pull it in, and then just go straight forward. So chest press, breathe in, straight forward. Breathe in, straight forward. And if you've never done these before, you can probably handle a little bit more weight than the fly. A nice variation is incline press. All you have to do to get, achieve the incline press is lean slightly forward. That changes the angle. And again, if you want to change the angle even more, all you have to do is adjust the bench. Grab one more time for the chest press. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Exercise number nine is the third exercise you could do with the crossover pulleys. Again, I'm going to put the position number one right here, so that's all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and hop onto the bench, make sure both sides are at number one. And the form on this one's going to be slightly different again. So the most important part is that you're going to grab and then bring your elbows not here, not here, but now you're going to bring them all the way in. So they're trying to squeeze towards each other, but don't touch them, right? So about shoulder width apart. And then I'm gonna lean forward, and I'm gonna extend straight up. I can also try it here. I don't have to lean forward as much, but I like to lean forward because it gives me a little bit more range of motion, and it also engages my core more. For those of you feeling ambitious, you could do a one-arm extension, Maybe it's a little bit much weight for me at the moment, but I got this. I love the idea of isolating the tricep. And there you have it. Exercise number 10, we are now moving into the arms. So this is really exciting because we take the same crossover pulley and we're gonna adjust it from the one number one slot all the way to the number five slot, which is essentially six o'clock if we were looking at a watch. So I'm gonna pull out the red pin, adjust it all the way, lock it in on the last hole, and then I simply grab the handle, and we're gonna start with the single arm. So depending on your level of comfortability, I can do both legs. I can isolate it by squeezing my elbow in, and then bending my knees just slightly, be curling up, Good, if I want to do straight legs and squeeze in my butt, maybe I'm focusing on my glutes at the same time, I squeeze back here, squeeze my stomach, go straight up. If I want to do a variation of the angle, then I'm going to turn sideways, go up. Or maybe if I want to do a hammer curl, I'm going to pull up like this. Slightly different angle, and so on and so forth. So maybe I want to go this direction. Maybe I want to go this direction. But the point is, this is a single arm, and then all you have to do is switch the sides. But guess what? We have an alternative solution. If you don't want to just do single arm curls, 
we actually have another alternative add-on for you, which you could do both arms on the same side. It's real simple. All we do is unhook the single and add the double grip. Okay? And be careful with your back on this one. Once you hook it in, I want you to push your heels down, squeeze your stomach, and pull with your back to stand up, right? None of this, because we don't want to throw your lower back out while you're trying to do your arm exercises. All right, standing up straight, squeeze your booty, pull your stomach in, elbows in, and pull. Straight up. And again, depending on your grip, Maybe you want to get fancy and do the overarm grip. This is just for those advanced people, but you know this, I don't have to show you. I'll show you one Lift up, lift down. All right, so my biceps are on fire. I think I want to change it up. So I can use the same bar to go from double arm arm curl to upright rows. Same thing, I want to make sure I'm grabbing properly. Standing with my legs squeezed. And then I'm going to go up here. Beautiful angle. Elbows up, squeeze your stomach. All right, but I didn't show you everything you could do yet with the single. So I'm going to unhook the bar. And we're going to do another variation. If you're thinking of supersetting your bicep workout with maybe a lateral raise, we can actually do that too with the crossover pulley. All I'm gonna do is grab it, so I'm gonna go from this to a lateral raise to the side. So I'm actually lifting to the side and pulling down. Often you'll see this done with dumbbells where you lift like that, so now I'm just gonna do it with the pulley. Lift to the side and up. You can do a little variation with that. Maybe pinky out. Good, and I can also do front raises. You gotta get the angle right on that. And lift up, and down, lift up. And that can also be done with the double bar as well. Exercise number 11, we're gonna still focus on the arms for this one. If you don't feel like sitting on the bench or it's a little awkward, maybe you have an injury, this is a good option for you. So I'm gonna grab the handles. First I'm gonna show you facing the back. But what I want you to do is stand here, lock your feet on the ground, heels pushing in, and it's simply pull back. And here's an angle for you, just so you can see. Simply here, pull up, here, pull up. Exercise number 12. So this is also an alternative to the seated rows. This is called standing rows. I love this one because it helps me dig my feet into the ground and also gives me a nice range of motion for my back. So first I'm going to flip it upside down the direction that I like. It's kind of up to your, up to your taste. But you want to grab and you want to make sure that they're vertical to start out with. So the first one we're going to do is just like with the horizontal bars, I'm going to pull with my elbows to the side. And pull here, squeeze back. Breathe in, breathe out. And if I want to change the angle, I'm just going to lean back just a little bit. Elbows out. And then we also have a variation, just like when we have the vertical on the seated row. We're going to do the same thing standing. So my hand position is going to go from horizontal to vertical, and I'm going to pull my elbows down for the lower back, lower upper back. Squeeze. So you can see. And same thing, if I want to get a little bit lower, I'm going to lean back. Now notice I'm pushing my knees up against here for stability. I'm leaning back. But you don't have to do that. You can also lean back. Exercise number 13. This is leg extensions. So if you've ever done leg extensions or this is your first time, what you need to know is it's very important where the actual seat is 
that's where it helps determine the range of motion. So for me, I'm gonna adjust the seat so that it's somewhere just below this hinge right here. The goal is to have my ankles hook underneath this red part right here so that I can get a full extension with my legs. Right now I think it seems like they might be a little short, so how am I gonna fix that? I'm gonna go a little bit up with the bench. Let me try again. Locking my ankles under, and now I get a nice range of motion. All right, next up, I wanna make sure that my back is pressed against the back here so that I can really use my thighs, right? And doing full extension. And let's say I wanna make it a little more complicated. So I'm gonna do single leg extensions. And then let's say I wanna do a little variation. So I'm gonna start with my legs going straight. And when I get to the top, I'm gonna to turn them in just a little bit. If you're in bodybuilding, you wanna get a nice definition. This is a great alternative. Also, if I wanna do a super pump at the end, then instead of going all the way down, I'm going to stop halfway. So I'm going to lift here, and then I'm going to stop here, lift, small, a nice spinal pump at the end. Let's say you're brand new and you have no idea what I'm talking about. You're going to go just with the basics. Make sure you get this position. You could do like three or four sets of ten, depending on the weight that you can handle. Breathe in, breathe out on the way up. And depending on where, how you feel, you can put your hands here, or you can grab underneath the bench. Exercise number 14, we are moving into standing leg curls. So contrary to the leg extension, this one is not fully guided by the machine, but it gives you a really nice range of motion. So normally when you do laying down, your legs are the front of your leg is pressing against the machine. In this case, depending on the size of your leg and your kneecap, it's kind of like a free motion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand next to this. I'm gonna lock my calf inside. I'm gonna use this as balance and then I'm going to squeeze backwards, all right? So I'm creating an imaginary stop for my knee, and then I'm pulling back. Bring it back down, pulling back, and squeezing as far as I can, try to get my heel to my glute. Squeeze back. Now, depending on your height of your leg, if you do want to use this as a, a base point, you would move this up or down to give you a lock for your leg. So let's say I want to push this down. Maybe that'll help. I personally like the challenge of being able to do it freestyle, but again, I was able to move this and give me a nice cushion for my leg to complete the curl. I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to move this down just a little bit so you can see the difference. You need your full body weight to get it down. So lean forward, sit the machine, lock it in. All right, so same thing. I'm going to find this nice angle. So notice I lock my heel in, and then I push the heel back away from the machine. And now I squeeze up and down, leaning forward, grabbing the machine for stability. Squeeze up, trying to get the heel to my glute. And the target is right here. Squeeze and squeeze. Wonderful hamstring workout. Exercise number 15 is the inner, outer, and glute leg kicks. So we're moving into sculpting the inner thigh, the outer thigh, and this part of the glute. The first, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the pulley and we're gonna adjust it from whatever position it's in to the six o'clock position or number five in the notches. So again, make sure you hold it, pull out the pin and lock it in all the way in the number five position. Depending on if you have the ankle strap, you can also use the handle for these exercises. First thing I'm gonna do is slip my foot in and so that it hits about halfway on the ankle. Then I'm gonna grab the bar and then I'm gonna stand like I'm standing one foot in front of the other. And I'm gonna move the standing leg away from the machine so that the leg that's being used is actually crossing in front, squeezing my thighs together. And then I'm gonna slowly use this part of my leg push out and up, push out and up. If you've done this before, adjust a little bit, but your most important thing is that your supporting leg is not fully locked out. It's comfortably bent 
but also grounded, pushing into the ground to give you a nice range of motion. Good. So I don't actually have to take my foot out at all to do the next exercise. I'm going to face away from you and I'm going to switch from going the outer thigh to the inner thigh. I'm going to hold on to this bar. I'm going to turn and now I'm going to move that same foot and I'm going to go this way, pulling in, back towards the machine, pulling in. So if the range of motion isn't right there, I can simply put my foot down, step away from the machine, and pull again. Out, squeezing your inner thigh. And then if I don't want to take my foot out, I can do the third exercise, which is going to be the hamstring kick or the back kick. I'm going to start here with my toe and lift up. If you have an ankle strap, you can use a little bit more of the range of motion, but if you're using this one, just go from your toe and lift straight up in the air. Lift up. And just so you can see all those exercises with the other side. So I'm going to reverse the whole thing. I'm going to hook my foot in. We're going to start with the inner thigh. To get the inner thigh, you want to stand away from the machine. Make sure there's more than shoulder width gap. And then you're going to cross in front. So for me, that's not quite enough range of motion. So I'm actually going to step farther away from the machine. And pull. And pull. Again, targeting this part. Okay, after I do the inner thigh, now I'm going to go to the outer thigh. So I adjust that by simply keeping my foot in. Now I turn away. And you're going to see the opposite angle you saw before. My goal is to have go from across over, and I'm going to go to the side, and we're working the outer part of the thigh. So crossing side and side. Now try not to lean over and hit your head. I just want you to stay nice and upright, moving to the side. Good, and then the back. Same thing, if you don't have the ankle strap, you can go just on your toe again and still get a nice burn in the hamstring. Go straight up, straight up. Squeeze in your stomach. And there you go. Exercise number 15 is something very innovative. We're actually gonna do a squat using a dip belt. So the dip belt is going to connect to the pulley system. The pulley system is going to be locked all the way down at the six o'clock position or the number five hook. Once it's locked in, there's a few ways you can set it up. I personally like to hook it in first and then step in and pull it up to me. Whatever you feel comfortable is great. All right, so I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to do it as tight as possible. And then once I have it set up, I'm going to step into the belt. I'm going to find my squat position. I'm going to do about shoulder width with my legs slightly turned out. And I'm going to grab the belt and I'm going to pull it up right over my hips. Okay. So again, it's not going to be the most extreme squat weight, but I do want resistance. And then I'm going to do a nice squat. I'm going to hold the machine. I'm going to find that position and then I'm going to go straight up. So I'm doing squats, no arms being used. It's actually the legs here. Okay. So I'm going to go down as low as I can, squeezing my stomach slowly pushing up. A pause squat is going to be a really good exercise to do on this one. So I'm holding one, two, push up, squeeze your glutes at the top. Go all the way down past 90 if you can here. And I'm going to pause right at the 90 and then push up, squeezing. Again, squeezing my stomach. Don't let your knees go past the toes. We're going to keep the knees right on top of the toes, weight in the heels, squeeze down, and then push right at the top of the pause. If you don't want to do the pause, you want to go straight through. All you do is go down, go straight up, squeezing at the top, squeezing at the top. If I don't want to go as low, maybe I want to do half squat, then go straight up, down, straight up, down, straight up. Let's say I want to get a little more innovative. And instead of just doing a double leg squat, I'm actually going to do a lunge from this. So I'm going to step back and up and back and up and back. Up, other side, back and up, back and up, back and up. From there, I'm going to try a side lunge. So I'm facing the machine, I'm going to step to the side and up and side and up and side and up. Same thing to the other side, side and up, side and up, side and up. And if I really want to get ambitious, I'm going to do jump squats. So I'm going to go squat, hop, squat, hop, squat, 
Not really a high jump, but just a little bit of a pump. And that's it for squats. Exercise number 17 is a variation of exercise number 10. This time it is a seated bicep curl, and we can use both arms at the same time. So you're gonna wanna put the pulleys in the number five position, which is also six o'clock. And depending on your height, you're gonna adjust the supporting bench, and then I'm gonna squeeze up, locking in my elbows. The angle is definitely to the outside. And if I wanna isolate, I can do just one arm or the other. And that's the variation for arm curls. 